Sounds crazy, but in 1953, there were only about 100 computers in the whole world. By the late 70s, that number had gone up quite a bit, but the majority of the machines were still the size of a bus with hundreds of valves and great reels of magnetic tape. And you usually had to be a computer scientist with a white coat and probably safety specs and a clipboard to work out how to run them. To most people, computers back then were still mysterious bleeping Big Brother contraptions used for academic work and industry. Computing was basically either very difficult or very expensive, usually both. Not that it mattered, because in 1977, the president of a major American computer company told us there is no reason anyone would want a computer in their home. So there. Then along came a self-made man called Clive, who had a different idea. Clive Sinclair couldn't stop inventing things. A working man's boffin, he'd already scored a hit with the first slimline pocket calculator. Sinclair was one of those guys who liked to give the public what they wanted, even if they didn't know they wanted it yet. And what he thought the public wanted now was a computer in their own home. And that meant making it affordable. So in 79, with some clever design and marketing and using the TVs and cassette players people already had to cut costs, Sinclair and his team created a computer for use in the home. All for £99.95p. Bargain. And it was called the ZX80. Weighing in at 12 ounces, with one kilobyte of memory, a monochrome display and no sound, the ZX80 wasn't going to give Einstein a run for his money. But this little beauty proved a point. 20,000 were sold into a market that nine months earlier hadn't even existed. And when the ZX80's much improved and even cheaper successor, the ZX81, was launched, demand for home computers went through the roof. Soon in 1982, Sinclair brought out the ZX Spectrum, now with 48K. With millions sold, it would become hands down the most successful British computer ever made. This was a new dawn, and now that dawn had sound and eight colours. Now, Sinclair's original ambition was to create computers for people who wanted a tool to learn about programming on. And this did happen. The ZXs were quite simple little things, so you could really get your hands dirty with them and do a bit of DIY programming. But most people, that would definitely be me, wanted to play games. Good job then, because soon there were hundreds of them. Lots of these games were put together by professionals, but many, many more were created by an army of bedroom coders, all making their own adventures and selling them through the mail. Some of these teenagers cutting their teeth on Sinclair's machines became experts, and they're why the UK became a global force in the software and gaming industry. All those mind-blowing games we play now all started with a Sinclair user in their pyjamas. But things weren't going to stop moving fast. By 1984, there were more and more companies fighting for the computer market, and an American firm called IBM had launched something they were calling a personal computer Sinclair would lose the ultimate battle for the market to bigger US companies, but he'd won the argument. In just a few years, he'd helped take computers out of the hands of academics and businesses and given them to us. Because Clive Sinclair and other pioneers in the early 80s brought us into a new age. An age where, with no degree, no white coat, no safety specs, the next multi-million pound breakthrough in the number one industry of our time could be made by you.